now support the show go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing we got rock on hats rock on shirts the rock on hats are embroidered get your exclusive merchandise now rock on era begins again What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey, man, we got Mad Max out there. New t-shirt and a cool-looking mask. Make sure you go over to the official Insane Throttle support store. We have something that really angered me today, and it has to do with that jump up north. Our government dropped the ball again. Yes, they dropped the ball. Wait till you hear this damn story. It has to do with the guy who uh, thought, you know, actually re uh, rode head on into uh, a motorcycle and killed the guy because he thought he was a racist because he was white. Turns out. <laughs> Not a lot of good stuff coming out of this. You know, I'll just have to wait to that, uh, you know, go over the news with you. Because you're not going to believe it either. Uh, also, I was watching that uh, opening with uh, the uh, support store. And uh, the Converse came by. You know, we have our own Converse shoes now, our own design and stuff. And it harkens back to when somebody asked me. What do you think about guys wearing, you know, high tops, Converse, uh, tennis shoes while riding? And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, that's all I wear when I ride. You know, I like being comfortable. Uh, I guess I got a different style uh, than a lot of so-called uh, hardcore bikers, you know, where it's the boots and it's leather this, leather that. I find leathers freaking hot. Yeah, they're good for freaking, uh, you know, the slide if you're going to take one. Uh, but the way I look at it is like, man, you want to look good if you're going to go down. No, I'm just kidding, man. It's just more comfortable for me. You know, yeah, I got the boots. I got the steel toes and all that jive. Uh, but there's nothing better than being comfortable on a ride. Me, personally, always high top converse. Anytime you see me. I'll be in high tops, man. That, uh, you know, workout pants and cut-off shirts, that's just the way I roll with my uh, snapback hats. That's what I like, man. And I know a lot of the old-timers, oh, boy, do they give you hell. Ah, you're wearing tennis shoes. You know, I actually got to do the history of where that all came in where you had to wear boots to, uh, you know be a part of the lifestyle but one thing I don't feel uh, too bad about is you know the younger generation hey they're all in high tops too and <laughs> you know they're not the stereotypical biker the way they're dressing you know well they look good doing it man you know then you got the kids that are riding the rockets and stuff uh you know at least they're kind of smart man they wear the protective gear but uh anyway we're gonna get to this news man and you're really gonna get pissed off when you see it you really are live.com this is the first one that's got me a little upset here uh, the man suspected in crash that killed three members of the Thin Blue Line Motorcycle Club, guess what, was living in the country illegally, on bond, in a violent attack. Now, just like New Hampshire, I will not give out the dude's name. Not going to do it. But let's listen. See what do you have to say right here on this Now it's six new details about a man suspected of driving drunk and plowing into a band of motorcyclists over the weekend. Three members of the Thin Blue Line Motorcycle Club were killed. As Eyewitness News reporter Mariah Medina explains, the driver is not only living in the country illegally, he's also oh my accused God, the of hitting media another person actually with his truck. Freaking covered it. A guy who shouldn't even been in this country was drunk by noon on a Saturday and veered over the center line and killed three of the best men I've ever met. Thin Blue Line spokesman David Weed is talking about 28-year-old Ivan Robles Navejas. 
was now behind bars on bonds totaling half a million dollars in connection with the Saturday afternoon crash that killed Jerry Harbour, Joseph Paglia, and Michael White all members of the motorcycle club. Immigration and Customs Enforcement today confirming that Navejas was living in America illegally. What's more, records show he was arrested in connection with a violent 2018 assault in which he was accused of hitting oh, someone with a truck before biting off part of their ear. He was out on a $65,000 bond and awaiting trial in that case when authorities say he hit and killed the three motorcyclists. Tell me how he's driving drunk after those kinds of incidents in 2020 and not sitting in a jail somewhere or at least deported out of our country. Prior to that, records show Navejas was arrested That's in 2016 on a DWI charge. Before that, arrested in 2013 and convicted in 2015 of evading arrest. ICE says Navejas' 2016 DWI arrest did not meet the agency's enforcement priorities oh at God. the time. We'd stress this isn't political, it's personal. I want him to know the character of the people that he killed that <laughs> even if he's able to turn his life around he probably doesn't have enough time left in his lifetime to make the difference that those three individuals would have made in their lifetimes the yeah, sad state of affairs man so you know ice knew about this guy being illegal and that's what really infuriates me with these illegals man you know, the left acts like they're entitled to be in this country. They are not. Listen, my grandmother was first generation American. She came over from Italy and she did it the right way. Just like many of the other immigrants that came into this country. But for this to be happening, you know, where they just go over the border and guess what? We're going to give you a vote. That's all this is about. That's all this is about. And you better wake up because that's their plan. Let's get everybody we can to get in the vote. You know, they're the most corrupt party this country has ever seen. They're Marxists, they're communists, and everything else. It's just ridiculous that we actually got people that vote for them. Now, I know a lot, I've, these knuckleheads, you know, I guess a bonics and uh, freaking hooked on phonics don't work for you. Yeah, they're law enforcement officers, two actually from Niles, that's right outside of Chicago. They were killed on a bike. Put all that politics and I hate this and hate that away. A motorcyclist got killed and he got killed by, a, they got killed by an illegal alien that was here in this country illegal and by a drunk just like what happened to the jarheads uh, seven where the dude was popped up on all kinds of drugs crossed that center line and killed seven people nine people uh, total were injured in this just by one illegal alien that was in this country drunk think about that and our government could have done something about this before it happened Let's go to FDLreporter.com. Records. Oh, well, let's go back here. I kind of hit it on the thing. Fond du Lac man charged with hate crime in fatal crash had history of, guess what? Be uh, bizarre behavior, but freed from jail in 2019. Doug Schneider of the Fond du Lac Reporter reports on this one. Family members, let's see if this was a video, no it ain't. Family members, police, and prosecutor raised concerns about Daniel Navarro's mental health months before he was uh, charged with a hate crime for ramming his pickup into a motorcycle, killing a white retired police officer. But there is no public record showing that the red flags raised by people who encountered Navarro led to any mental health care for the Fond du Lac man or a, to a psychological evaluation that was ordered by a judge last fall an investigation by the reporter shows. A judge later dismissed 
a disorderly conduct charge against Navarro and ordered him released from the Fond du Lac County Jail in November. Let me guess, that judge is probably a Democrat. Now, Navarro faces the charge of first-degree intentional homicide as a hate crime in the July 3rd killing of a 55-year-old retired police officer and Marine Corps veteran. Marine Corps veteran. Navarro also faces a second uh, felony, first-degree reckless endangering safety as a hate crime. In a four-page criminal complaint, prosecutors accused Navarro, 27, of intentionally crashing his father's pickup truck head-on into Thiessen's Harley-Davidson, leaving Thiessen dead on the pavement. <laughs> what a sick bastard. Authorities allege that Navarro said he targeted the cyclist because he wanted to kill a white person. Police said Navarro, who is Latino, claimed a friend and neighbor who are Caucasian had poisoned him with acid. You can't come up with anything better than that. You know what? Take your cry, man. You. Oh, man, I can't wait to see them get you in the joint. Uh, under questioning by detectives, Navarro also complained that a supervisor at a job site in Ripton had intentionally contaminated him by applying a chemical sterilizer to his jacket. This guy's a nut, and that's what he's going to use during trial. Uh, the killing is the most serious act that brought Navarro to the attention of authorities, but it wasn't his first. Again, like the New Hampshire 7 or down uh, what we just went over, the authorities could have stopped this. His sister called police August 23rd to voice concerns about his welfare and that their mother, who had regularly been sleeping at her church out of fear of confrontations because uh, Navarro had his bizarre behavior. Yeah, and you joint, they're going to treat you like one. Uh, in a statement, uh, the police documented in a com criminal complaint, Navarro's mother, his own mother's scared. Isn't that telling you something? Isn't it telling you to freaking step up and do something? Damn. Quote, Daniel had recently gone to the hospital and his doctor stated that he should be seen as psychiatrist. Fond du Lac detective Steve Kaufman wrote in the complaint. The late August confrontation prompted Fond du Lac police to charge Navarro with only disorderly conduct. Uh, city police tried to have Navarro placed under a 72-hour mental health hold that would have enabled authorities to hold him for up to three days while mental health professionals determined if he was a danger to the others. Uh, the criminal complaint in the hate crime case says the request was denied by a local crisis hotline. How do you guys feel now? How do you feel by denying that one? Maybe you guys actually look into something. The disorderly conduct charge landed Navarro in jail. He posted a $100 bond because he couldn't raise 100 bucks. So I don't think he's going to get the $6,000. Uh... Navarro's current attorney, Jeffrey Jensen, out of Milwaukee. Sometimes I wonder how these defense lawyers can actually uh, do what they do with people like this and child molesters and stuff. So, yeah, another story here that the cops could have stopped from happening. Fatalities in uh, the last one was three. This one, another one, that's four. Four people could have been saved. Not to mention the other ones that were injured. Unfrickin' real, man. More of my final thoughts. Uh, let's go over to the ObserverReporter.com. Matthew Vasquez convicted in pagan motorcycle attack in trouble again. Barbara Miller. Matthew J. Vasquez has been incarcerated since June of 2019. But authorities have filed new charges against him, this time for conspiring to hide two motorcycles that were being repossessed. Well, how do you know he was hiding them? I don't know. Maybe he lost them. Vasquez, 32, uh, is accused of making an arrangement involving three co-defendants to conceal 2014 and 2018 Harley-Davidson's 
Washington County detective alleged in an affidavit that Vasquez financed the newer model through the Irvin Works Federal Credit Union and the other bike through Eagle Mark Savings Bank but failed to make the payments on the secured loans. Vasquez was formerly employed at U.S. Steel's Irving Works. Recorded phone conversations and video chats revealed that he spoke with others about concealing the bikes. What is it, man? You never talk on a jailhouse phone. My God. Text messages between the co-defendants. Yes, you can actually email prisoners now. The, the, the thing is, they can read it all. <laughs> uh, David Wadsworth, 50, of Bell Vernon, worked for the American Recovery. New payments on the uh, 2018 bank were in default and promised Vasquez he wouldn't do him like that. An unidentified friend of Vasquez had the older bike, and Vasquez, David Wadsworth, his wife Karen, also uh, 50, and uh, they give the ages, made arrangements to conceal them at a store in Bell Vernon. Uh, Karen Wadsworth said she is Vasquez's cousin. Uh, the prosecutor asked state police in Bell Vernon to obtain a search warrant and seize the bikes and impound them. How is that a freaking crime? Everybody would be charged with that. I know every you know I know people that were facing repossessions they hit it they weren't charged come on this is just another damn thing man to add on to him uh, he's serving a sentence of 21 and a half to 43 in prison after a jury convicted him of a brutal beating in April 2019 of a former pagan motorcyclist who had joined a rival club so yeah they're gonna be charging him again because they just got a heart on for the guy. You know, he did something that most people do. Uh, let's go to WSLS.com. Uh, one motorcycle club member is wanted, one arrested after Campbell County attack, deputies say. Uh, this ha actually happened on July 12th, and it's, you know, coming out now. Uh, authorities are asking for help finding a motorcycle club member. They say attack someone. On July 12th, a man called 911 after he said he was attacked by some motorcyclists near the Airport Plaza Shopping Center on Wards Road. He told authorities that what started out as an argument eventually escalated into an assault as well as property damage. During the course of the investigation, authorities identified two suspects. Hmm... Robert Earl Stanley and Thomas Bernard Sladen. Both are members of the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club and from Lynchburg, according to the Campbell County Sheriff's Office. Each faces charges of malicious wounding, malicious wounding by a mob. There's only two guys there. And felony property damage. On Thursday, members of the Sheriff's Office, with assistance from Lynchburg Police, and the FBI executed a search warrant and arrest warrant on Sladen at his home on Link Road without uh, incident. And they're still looking for uh, Stanley. Now let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. Tracy Wilkins of uh, 4 NBC4 Washington. Let's take a listen. It's the police department after the arrest of a man in District Heights. The video went viral and the department says they are investigating Ooh, this. News Force Tracy Wilkins, our Prince George's County Bureau Chief, has the story. Oh, 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 oh. Thursday oh, yeah. night, this was the scene as Prince George's County guys got to come over and see this one outside of a district heights convenience store. Oh, put your hand behind your back. No, he's fighting. I'm not fighting. 24 year old Michael Kenny says he was distributing apparel from his clothing line when he and his friends were boxed in by Prince George's County police cars. Eventually, after striking one of my friends and subduing them. They struck me as well. Kenny, who works as a government contractor, according to his attorney, started his clothing line called What is Pluto four years ago and distributes it around the area. When Kenny spoke with News 4 on Friday, he was still wearing his hospital bracelet and showed us the bruises and lacerations he was left with after his arrest. He says he suffered a concussion. 
I don't know what death is like, but this felt like death. In the video, it appears none of the arresting officers were wearing the N95 masks required by the department to help stop the spread of coronavirus. We don't know if officers that were off camera were wearing them. I tried to oh, he got beat up. Oh. It was from coronavirus. Nice. Prince George's County Police say officers approached the men to issue citations for trespassing, a misdemeanor, when one person became aggressive. The statement says in part, well, the he is looking like he's resisting arrest. Orders to put his hands behind his back so he could be handcuffed. Two additional officers were required to make the arrest. One officer did strike the suspect in order to help gain control of his hands. Kenny was charged with multiple charges, including assault on an officer, resisting arrest, and trespassing. The force that was used on him not was anymore. not reasonable. He was taken to the ground, and as the video shows, he was struck several times. He's going to get paid. According to Prince George's County Police, there is no dash cam video of this incident, and the officers involved were not wearing body cameras. And while this incident is under investigation, the officers have not been placed on suspension. Well, yeah, there you go. It, it, everything is on video now. You know, some of us and uh, them on the other side need to realize that, man. Technology is everywhere. You're getting into something like that, man. People are busting out them phones. That's why I always say, if you're getting pulled over, make sure you go live. That way there's a record of it. Now, Corey uh, sent us another one. Kissing me, uh, police officer fired, unable to be rehired after accusations of domestic violence. Yes, there's another one. Same crime. Accused of domestic violence against another member of the force. Investigative reporter Carla Ray first reported on Officer Antonio Johnson's she arrest fugly. back in January. And Look she asked lips. the chief about his decision to fire the officer, even though the criminal case is still active. Oftentimes, internal affairs investigations Not will be put bad. on hold until a criminal case can Could play out in court. Hairdo. But in this case, because the alleged she domestic violence victim ones, was also she? a Kissimmee police officer, there was no delay. We first showed you the mugshot of now former Kissimmee police officer Antonio Johnson after You're he was in arrested in January following a fight with his then five-month pregnant girlfriend. A report oh, really? from St. Cloud Police months. noted that an argument over the woman contacting her ex turned physical when Johnson took the woman's phone out of her hands and held both of her wrists. But this just completed internal affairs investigation found that was just one of the claims of abuse that the victim, who is also a Kissimmee police officer, Oh, had made ouch! Johnson. I was close to both of them. So it's, uh, you know, it's almost like a family member, really. And uh, so it, it definitely So it's a heart. fellow like, cop. That's details. why you're uh, Police Chief Jeff put, O'Dell made the decision this. to terminate Johnson said. before the outcome of his criminal investigation based on the statements made in an injunction filing by the victim, including that Johnson broke several of the woman's phones so that she couldn't call 911, that he would grab her She's by the cop, face and off of her feet by her jaw, noting the pain was excruciating but never left bruises, and that he even allegedly pointed a gun toward her and pulled the trigger. The woman writing, thankfully the gun wasn't loaded, oh, but I thought dick. he was going to shoot me. That victim decided not to press charges, but the state attorney's office is still pursuing the criminal case. You know, we had a statement from a member in good standing in this organization and felt strongly about organization. You heard that, right? The, uh, criminal process to, to play out. Before his arrest, we had reported on Johnson in the past. Just over a year ago, FDLE looked into him after a teacher at this Kissimmee K-8 through charter school complained he handcuffed students and told them that they would be arrested for no reason. Internal investigators wow. determined he did use his handcuffs on three students during that incident. And he was still at the time, he go. kept his job. We take on a cumulative nature um, when we're talking about discipline or um looking for indicators that, that oh my do i got some stuff to talk to in my final thoughts I'm here, 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 here. just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market apparel that's based all upon bikers baggers and brotherhood and ladies we didn't forget about you either between tank tops and baby doll tees we have it all now just go to baggersyndicatecycles.com and check it out Mwah. Yeah, that is my girl, Kara, and I'm actually wearing one of their hats. So get on over there and check it out. BaggerSyndicateCycle.com Final thoughts. I don't know where to begin. Three incidences where cops could have prevented some violence. The first one, illegal alien. What is going on in this country? I remember when everybody was proud to be Americans. We were law and order type of deal. 
Well, you know, some stuff happens on the side, but, you know, I'm talking about the ones coming over the border illegally. You got these guys on the left that say, well, you know, they're just hardworking people. They're here illegally. They crossed the border and broke the law. You know, something that you guys like going after bikers for. I don't hear you guys complaining when, you know, there's abuse, there's uh, motorcycle profiling. I don't hear it. But we don't vote most of the time for you. You know, any, uh, you know, one with brains don't vote for you. That's what I got to say on that one. But to put American citizens' lives at risk just for votes, that's dishonorable, man. That ain't holding up your constitutional duty. And for the law enforcement, why why weren't they gone? They're, he's a, He was here illegally. What the hell's going on? Ship his butt back to where he came from. And this wouldn't have happened. Drunk in the middle of the day, and everybody knows how I feel about drunks. Oh my God, do I hate you. You know what? I get it. You want to get bombed? Don't jump in a car or on a bike. You know, that's just common freaking sense. But this story, three people lost their lives. Others were injured in this because all the breakdown in the process. Just like in New Hampshire, there was a breakdown. How the hell did that guy keep his CDL? I'm still like, duh, no way. Because I held the CDLA. And something like this would have happened. It would have been gone right away. That's a federal license. I can't believe there's no tie between uh, secretaries of state on this type of stuff. But this is a, one incident that was preventable. And the second one up in Fond du Lac, here they had ample warning this dude was a nut. But again, the system broke down. They knew this. They tried to put him on a 72-hour hold. His own mother was scared of him. What is going on? Where was the breakdown in the freaking, uh, you know, the chain right there? Somebody could have been still alive. Just these two incidences, they really put a lot of doubt in your mind about this system. This shouldn't have happened. So, if you take three incidences, the New York, or the uh, Jarheads one, that's seven, then three, that's ten, and then the other one's allowing people that didn't need to die because the authorities knew what these offenders were about and did nothing about it. They let them slip through the cracks. Regardless of what side you fall on, that right there is unexcusable. Unexcusable that something like that happened. The first one, these were fellow Americans. Some of them were even in the Corps or in the, the service. That should make you think right there come November what's going on in this country. I'm not telling you which way to vote. I'm just telling you, look at the damn records instead of your damn party. Me, I'm an independent. I can see which party is doing what. That's because I do my research. You know, I just don't watch CNN or Fox News to get my opinions. I don't have somebody else tell me what I should vote for. I actually look at the people, their voting record, the whole nine yards. And one thing that's for sure, the D's, they all vote together, man. They never break off from each other. That should tell you something. It's nothing but power-hungry crap. Now they want to get rid of the 60-vote filibuster if the Democrats take the Senate. Do you know how bad this country is going to get if that happened? That has been around since Thomas freaking Jefferson was president. But again, they're power-hungry. And this is the kind of stuff in the first freaking story that's going to happen with these people because they want to turn them into votes in LA you already got uh, one school district even if you're illegal you can sit on a school board you can you know get elected 
What the hell is that? After all the people that died in wars for this country, I bet they are rolling over in their grave right now seeing if they would have seen what happened this year. This year had to be the worst year ever. I can't wait the 2020s, you know, over with. Uh, and then you can see the way they're trying to control the narrative on this COVID-19 stuff. You're losing a lot of freedoms and you just don't know it. Yes, you should be wearing masks out in public. Me, I'm just scared to hell of catching the stuff. So I do it voluntarily. And that's the way it should be voluntarily, not mandated by the government. As soon as you give up one freaking iota to them, next thing you know, you're losing everything. But the failure of law enforcement, the last story with the wall of shame, Corey Graff's wall of shame. They knew this dude was doing, why didn't they freaking fire him after putting handcuffs on kids? What? And then he says, well, we have to have progressive uh, violations to do something. No, you don't. Their violation to the oath should be freaking enough to fire them. God knows you wouldn't give freaking bikers that chance. Just look at the one. For something that people do on a daily basis, when people are facing uh, repossession of their cars, their bikes, they hide them. But you don't see them going to jail. It's up to the repossessor to fucking get find a damn crap. But no, because this guy was convicted, looking at up to 45 years in prison, they just want to add on to the charges. Which I have to say was a pretty dumb deal using the phone or email, whatever you guys are using. How many times I say and other people say that stay off them jailhouse phones, man. They are recording everything. It's like too easy. They don't even have to do nothing. Just listen to your conversation. What the heck, man? Unfreaking real. <laughs> Unreal. That's all I have to say on that. Hey, interesting story that I have been researching into, and I haven't brought it on the program yet. I guess the U.S. Department of Defense is finally coming off with their crap. Yes, that one video of that Navy fighter jet uh, chasing that one object, well, it was not man-made, they claim. Not man-made. And also, in the past, they're finally starting to come out and say metals that they've recovered weren't man-made. Makes you kind of think, doesn't it? So I'm going to follow that one because I'm like into that kind of stuff. I like uh, ancient history, uh, ancient aliens. I love that show. Because, you know, not because I believe a lot of the stuff, but because it's interesting to learn, get all sides of the story. You know how I am on that stuff. <laughs> it's cool. But uh, anyway make sure you subscribe uh go get your gear man i got that new max out with the biker helmet goggles he looking mean as hell trademarked by the way <laughs> also your insane uh, throttle mask and stuff say uh safe during the covid stuff but with that i'll talk to you guys later and thanks for all the donations in uh the youtube super chat that really means a lot a town and the rest of you guys that do that for me all that money goes right back in the show don't forget to hit like over on facebook and youtube and as always man rock on i say goodbye vamoose adios ciao so long get your hat get don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos, done a motorcycle madhouse, and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. You 
have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all the baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BeggarSyndicateCycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!